So you can see that would be ideal for the IRS. So they're going to lean towards people wanting to be categorized as employees rather than self-employed because as employees, they can pressure the employer to do the work for them, collecting the money and uh, doing uh, the reporting. So then the question is, well, do I want to be self-employed as a, an individual? You might ask that question. Would it be beneficial for me to be self-employed or not? The IRS will try to argue that it's not because again, they're kind of skewed towards wanting people to be in an employee employer situation. The answer of course is that it depends. There's gonna be, sometimes it might be good, sometimes it might be bad. What are some of the pros and cons? Well, if you are a W-2 employee, in theory, the employer is paying for the expenses that you are dealing uh, with, and it should be easier to, to deal with in that regard. If you're self-employed, you're gonna be basically paying for your own expenses. And you might say, hey, look, when I'm an, an employee, I still pay for things that are expenses that I use for business and I should get a deduction for it. Whereas if I was self-employed, I would get those deductions. That's a benefit. You can write off the business deductions more easily as a self-employed individual than as uh, an employee. However, on the downside, the net income that you receive as a sole proprietor could be subject to both self-employment self -employment tax, which includes the employer and employee portion, in essence, of payroll taxes, Social Security and Medicare. So there's ups and downs, of course, to being an employee or being uh, self-employed. It's not really cut and dry as to which you would be prefer if you could pick one. But the IRS, of course, is gonna to try to make it not cut and dry. They wanna be able to say, you either qualify as an employee or you qualify as being self-employed. Obviously, there, in reality, there's gonna be a lot of gray area where you might fit in either category, but that's what the IRS is gonna to try to do. And you can imagine that they're gonna be tilted towards having someone categorized as an employee. All right, given that, are you self-employed person if you carry on a trade or business as a sole proprietor or an independent contractor? That's the definition of basically being self-employed, right? You're self-employed person if you carry on a trade or business as a sole proprietor or independent contractor. Now note for taxes, how easy that is to do because for taxes, if you generate revenue, any revenue is generally thought of as taxable income to the IRS unless they have an exemption for it. So if you go out and you just start like a hot dog stand or something like that, then the IRS is gonna say, hey, you're a business, we're your silent partner, we want you to report that on a Schedule C and give us our bit, our part uh, of that income. You might have all kinds of other questions like, well, what if, uh, what if I do I need a license for it? And so on and so forth. Well, those are state questions typically in terms of what you need to do to be able to sell hot dogs at a particular place. But whether you qualify or not, if you did sell hot dogs and you make money from the federal government side of things, they want the money. Like even if you were an illegal and you were, you were in an illegal business, you're doing you're you're doing something illegal, then the government will still say if you're Al Capone, the government will still say we want our piece of your profits even if it's illegal, right? So, so the fact that something is legal or not doesn't stop you from, again, if you had income, then the IRS is gonna say that you should be giving them part of the income, right? So caution. So you do not have to carry on regular full-time business activities to be self-employed. So you might be saying, okay, what if I only do it part-time? I have a W-2 job and I do some other stuff on the side. Well, the question is, are you doing it for profit? Are you making money with it? If you're making money with it, the government's gonna want a piece of that. And basically, if you're making money, then the government, you're probably gonna see it as a profit-making thing. However, you might be saying, well, maybe I'm not making money. Maybe it's running at a loss. In that case, it is questionable. Maybe you do photography on the side and you're able to sell some of your stuff because you're good at it. Well, then the question is, if you write off all of your photography equipment, you might end up with a loss. The government doesn't like losses because when you have losses, you might be able to take those against other income. They wanna be your silent partner when you earn money, 
so they get part of it. They don't want the liability when you lose money because then, then they have to pay you, right? So that would be a problem. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're not a business if you have a loss, but then you have the question that will come up of, is this really a business activity or is it a hobby? If it's a hobby, you might not report it on a Schedule C, but rather report it as other income on like a Schedule 1, for example, and be highly limited to the amount of deductions that you can have. If it's a business, however, you can take those deductions, possibly even have a loss that you can take against other income, but you need to be careful of that and make sure that you qualify because the IRS could come out and audit you and say, no, you're not a business, you're a hobby in that case, which would cause problems. So having a part-time business in addition to your regular job or business may be self-employment. Trade or business. A trade or business is generally an activity carried on to make a profit. So that's the idea. We're trying, we're doing it to make a profit. Most people will, will bulk at that. A lot of people will say, no, I, I, I take photography because I am an artist. And that's why I do these. Look at, look at how beautiful this PowerPoint is. This is, this is art that I'm doing right here. I'm not doing this for money. Okay, I'm doing it for money. But some people might argue that they're not doing it for money. I do, I, I like what I'm doing too, but okay. So, you, but the, the idea is that if you're doing whatever you do and you're also generating money with it, you're trying to do it well, people actually wanna pay you for it. Then of course the IRS is gonna say it's a profit activity and they want a piece of the profits. If you're doing it at a loss, then again, from the IRS's perspective, it's a hobby, right? And we don't want to pay you for losses. You deal with your own hobbies. But if you make money with it, then give us a piece. So the facts and circumstances of each case determine whether or not an activity is a trade or business. So you do not need to actually make a profit to be in a trade or business as long as you have a profit motive. So that's where the question comes in on the loss side of things. If you have a loss, you don't want to be too scared of taking the loss against other income because that might be perfectly legitimate if you have a business objective of revenue generation. Most businesses have losses in the first few years. It's just that if you have like multiple years of losses, more than like three years, you can see why the IRS would then say, well, now the, the, the shift of, of needing to prove whether it's business or hobby goes to you possibly at that point in time. And in the event of an audit, then you'd have to make the argument, make the case that is this is a profit seeking business that I'm in. We just happen to have losses. We're gonna make money possibly next year. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen, man. So you need to, uh, you, you do need to make ongoing efforts to further the interest of your business.